Are you a direct-to-consumer founder or media buyer and you're running your paid ads with retargeting focused, interest-based targeting, cost caps, bid caps, ABO testing, manually testing, so on and so forth, that framework of mind, and you're increasing budgets by 10%, 20% every single day, you're treating your ad account like the stock market, well, I want you to stop what you're doing and ultimately figure out a way where you can simplify this process. If I compare the machine learning platform and the data points Meta has as far as an ad access channel, if I look at Google and just the amount of data points they're conducting in a single day and the amount of ad spend they're holding and generating and ultimately producing and providing for marketers every single day. I mean, just think about the algorithms, the complexity of the data points on all of these access channels and the amount of users on them and the data points across all of these buying processes, right? So now when it comes to looking at what is the best way, what is my focus and how can I generate a profit for my company, right? Because that's ultimately why all of us are in business. We're in business to make money. We don't run a nonprofit organization. We're not focused on not generating a profit, right? Because there's no point of us. We, we're better off just working at nine to five as entrepreneurs. We're focused on ultimately running a business that can generate profit. And if you want to go a step further, if you're operating a company and you do want to exit one day, well, you need to have your operations in place, your unit economics in place. And ultimately you need to fix your coherent targeting strategy when it comes to using these access channels coherently. So now with that being said, let's dive into the specifics on what are the current bottlenecks with interest-based targeting. So in your head, you might be thinking, why should I listen to this individual across this video? I don't even know about right now. To put it bluntly, you can check my website, you can see our case studies, but I, as a growth consultant, I've consulted north of dozens of what, 50 plus direct to consumer founders in different spots of their business with some brands doing north of a million a month in revenue, brands doing more than that a month in revenue to even startup companies doing anywhere from 50 to 100K a month in revenue. So uh, I would say in total ad spend across the board, what we're seeing is around a million a month. But uh, ultimately, what are the steps and what has been the bottlenecks across a brand doing less than a million a, a year in revenue? How can they break through to that next step? And ultimately, how as a brand can you go from a million a year in revenue to 10 million a year? How can you multiply that growth? Well, it starts with your framework and how you look at technology and how do you look at these platforms when and it comes to testing, when it comes to running ads, right? What's been taught across the board has been, okay, you have your t prospecting campaign, you have your scaling campaign, or you have um, different campaigns pushing uh, different ad sets or different demographics targeting. Uh, you're excluding a ton of audiences. You're doing a ton of retargeting, uh, so on and so forth, right? That's been the over overlying theme of how you use these platforms, right? With Facebook, you're doing heavy retargeting. Uh, with Google, you're doing heavy retargeting. So what happens is you have a lack of growth as your top of funnel audience. You're ultimately just trying to squeeze all of your existing customer base without actually growing it. So with ads, because ads only amplifies your business, right? If your business can't grow organically or it's not generating sales organically, well, it's going to be very difficult to scale on paid media. But if your brand has market fit organically and has that demand and you run ads to it, well, then ultimately if your unit economics are profitable, well, you can scale pretty hard, but where the bottlenecks and where the flaws in the model are is simply put with manual ABO testing, you have instability at higher daily ad spends because you have to be, you have to spend more hours in the ad account, right? You have to spend more times looking at campaigns, looking at data points, seeing, okay, if this target CPA hit to so like, what adjustments do you have to make on the fly? And these minor changes, these individual changes every single time, you're resetting the learning phase. You're resetting, yeah, you're retraining the algorithm. Instead of letting the algorithm do what it does best and finding these data points, you're constantly micromanaging. Like imagine you micromanaging an employee. The work typically doesn't pan out really well. Whereas when you hire somebody, you hire them for a specific role and you hire them to grow. Well, then when it comes to paid media, I'm ultimately trusting Meta's machine learning platform, their data points to find my customers uh, compared to, let's say, a TikTok, right? Because I know Meta's been around longer than uh, these other access channels, right? Like a TikTok or like a Pinterest. So ultimately, these strategies have been taught by flashy marketers who operate on ultimate just shit margins, no profit. So coming into this, what is the correct strategy or what is the way to approach paid media. Well, first things first, 
these are principles. I don't focus on hacks or strategies, simply put, because things change, the market moves in many directions, and it's very important that you stay ahead of the curve, but also we study the greats before us. David Olegui and uh, these uh, direct response marketers, email marketers, boron letters, um, these other uh, resources in the space as copywriters. Cash advertising is another great book. Uh, but when I mention guys like David o Ogilvy and and the boron letters and and just these these great resources and individuals and and just copywriters and, and advertisers, um, David o Ogilvy he has uh, he was running an advertising agency back in the day. I mean, this was before laptops. We're talking about 19, I assume, what, 1970s? I, maybe 1950s, maybe even later than that. But uh, ultimately, selling directly from just letters, just mail, direct mail. And uh, when you're able to sell an offer with just the lack of resources like we have today in advertising, right? We don't have... Oh, now we're able to come up with creatives, UGC style content, so on and so forth to generate the sell. Well, back in the day, you just had to be really good with words and very persuasive with your copy to get somebody who's never heard about what your offer is or what you sell and ultimately get them to whip out and, and pay, pay with whatever form of payment they had and uh, to subscribe or, or to ultimately close an offer, right? Just think about the complexity of that. So now we, when we tie in these principles... I know that whatever strategy I test, what moves the needle regardless of what strategy I test is the creatives, the offer, the post-click experience, and then the checkout phase and, and ultimately that downsell offer that we can push. But if I look at the life cycle or the, or the sales journey, right? Somebody's scrolling and then they come across an ad that gets them to stop scrolling that's compelling enough to get them to click onto the next step, which is seeing them directly to the landing page. That landing page has to be fast enough to capture their attention, to get them to keep, uh, to, to stay on the, to, the screen, to wait for that loading speed, to then scroll all the way down to then convert, right? If we just think about the amount of steps there are, your, your marketing strategy or whatever campaign structure you set up typically won't move the needle for you as more or won't produce more of an ROI as testing different creatives, making better landing pages, making better offers, and making the sales journey far more efficient. Now, when it comes to targeting though, when you set up your campaigns in a simplified manner, this allows you to point out and troubleshoot some of the flaws or errors within the sales funnel. So I like testing bundles, simply put, because most brands, single SKUs, if we, if we take into account shipping, uh, most brands are trying to offer free shipping. Just the unit economics don't make sense. So most brands don't know their numbers. The first things first is, we well, what is your best-selling offer? Depending on what, as a brand, what are you selling? What are you promoting? What's your average order value? What's your cost of goods, shipping and handling, landing cost per AOV? What's your gross profit? What's your uh, calculate gross margin per AOV? And then uh, what's your break-even CPA? And then what's ultimately your initial calculate gross break-even ROAS? Well, even though ROAS doesn't matter, it's just a metric to have at scale just to have but ultimately what moves the needle for us is AOV and uh, CPA. But also I want to take into account what is the percentage of second frequency purchase or LTV. Depending on your subscription or how good your product is, some customers buy back uh, after three months, some brands or some customers buy back after 30 days, 60 days, just really depends. But we want to know our numbers first. If we can push a single SKU that gets us at 70% gross margin, well, then I know that our CPA, we can, uh, we would have to hit around like a cost of a purchase that is in the 55, 60% mark to be at profit, right? That's why I want to hit. I want to increase as much profit margin as possible, right? Now, for whatever reason, if our first SKU on paid ads isn't profitable or we have to get a customer or we have to acquire a customer at $15 or $20 to be at break even, I would say that's more difficult Then I would build towards a bundle, push three SKUs together, or push four SKUs together, increase your profit margin so that when you acquire a customer at 70 bucks or 80 bucks, you're still within profit. And it makes sense for you to run ads so that you're growing your, your first order profit on the front end, and then you're expanding your LTV with downsells on the back end. But this strategy right here, one campaign pushing an AOV bundle with profitable unit economics, 
three main ad sets running at the very maximum. Nothing more, nothing less. We have our main winner's ad set here that's hosting all the post IDs that have went through this creative testing phase. And now when we're going broad in a CBO environment, Meta's allocating spend to what they deem is best for the end user experience. And then here in our dynamic creative tests, what this simply is, is a feature on Meta where you're actively testing uh, multiple combinations of a single ad creative and ad copy uh, without doing ABO or manual testing and manually forcing spend across these uh, Meta's machine learning platforms, allocating spend to what they deem is best for the end user. And then from there, you're, you're, you're able to increase your overall budget on daily ad spend relatively pretty fast. Uh, I covered a, a case that we did recently where we took a brand from literally zero dollars in spin to five hundred dollars in less than three days, uh, simply just because profitable and economics. And then from there, we had compelling creatives, landing page offer. So uh, everything's a mechanism, everything's a puzzle, and everything is connected. Uh, the more you focus on better creatives, better offers, well, then you're going to see your campaigns be profitable as a byproduct, right? So I say this to say. Depending on your brand, depending on your budget, depending on what you're at, there's not a one size fits all, right? This strategy is good for you. Ha if you have budget, you're generating market fit and you're able to afford to ultimately acquire brands at a profit with profitable unit economics. This strategy right here will do more for your business on a longer time frame. Whereas this ABO testing makes sense if you're in a crunch time. Let's say it's Black Friday and you're just trying to push a single product and you're, you have a specific set budget. You're not trying to go over it. You're trying to set up a cost cap zone and so forth. Now, I'm just saying this strategy long term will do more for your business rather than if you implement this day in and day out as your long term strategy. This is actually hurting your business over time. But this is good for short term. You want to inject cash flow into your company. You need it. But uh, ultimately, you're going to see higher CPMs and you really have to have a really damn good offer to uh, capture because the amount you spend on retargeting is going to be way more expensive rather than you going uh, fully broad. Here, you're going to see way, way cheaper CPMs. But with that being said, this ties into, okay, how can we take advantage of creative testing? Well, you have to separate into three segments. You have your angles, which is who is, what is our ideal customer profile and who are we targeting as a byproduct of our copy keyword slang, our concept, which is how are we going to produce or how are we going to reach this freaking end user that we're trying to get a sell from is it going to be a static is it going to be a gif is it going to be ugc and then from there we want to expand on variations now that's how we go about creative testing we have our concept we have two additional variations and then we put this in this environment and if a creative doesn't get spinned over seven days well then that creative simply wasn't good enough to beat out whatever's winning in the main winner's ad set and then from there we just expand on either making a different angle or testing a different angle or if we have something that's working, we go and just go up the vertical and just expand on what's been working. So that's how you have to look at your media buying strategy. Keep it very simple. And ultimately, I use these channels as Meta first, Google second, uh, and then as a third channel, it's either YouTube ads or TikTok really depends on the product. But Meta has just been more consistent. It's just a far better access channel than any other channel than I, I've been tested. So with that being said, guys, just to recap everything that I just covered, manual ABO testing will hurt your bottom line if this is your long-term growth strategy. This going fully broad in a CBO environment will grow your business in the long-term time frame. It just takes time to implement these structures and actually focus on what moves the needle, which is creatives. You have to build out the creative system to do that. Uh, you're going to need to test landing pages. You're going to need to look over your numbers, know your numbers, and then from there, build offers on that. And uh, yeah, test the strategy out yourself. But if you're looking to expedite that process and you're ready to just have everything built in house so that you can have a chance to exit, well, then uh, feel free to book a call down below where you'll speak directly with me and I'll walk you through our protocol we've utilized for numerous brands. I've shared numerous case, uh, case studies on this channel. Uh, on some of our recent portfolio of brands under management and how we've been able to transform their business with going from a business that was solely rely on agencies to taking that and implementing these systems to helping them integrate in-house. So with that being said, if you want to 
eventually build in house and exit your company, feel free to book a call down below and I'll walk you through our systems. But uh, also, you can check out our protocol, my resources down below are Black Friday, Cyber Monday blueprints. And uh, if there's any questions, feel free to leave a comment, but I'll catch you guys in the next video.